Hello, hello, uh, my name is Simo Roche and welcome to today's Be Heard live event. And when I say live, I mean live. We are out out here at UA92. It is an amazing, amazing place and we're so grateful for the University Academy based here in Trafford, Greater Manchester, for loaning not only their facilities but their fantastic students who are taking part in this brilliant event today. So the aim of UA92 is to make higher education accessible for all and to work in partnership with business to ensure that the students are fully equipped to make a difference in the career that they choose. So thank you in advance to those that you can't see behind the scenes for making this come to your screens today. So this bite-sized lunchtime session is all around our Be Heard campaign, which is about leveling up the media and events industry. So we created this campaign earlier this year and for us it was all about creating people to sit on fantastic sofas like this. So everyone has got a story in them, everyone has got something that they are passionate about and we want to grow it through our searchable b-her.io database. We've got the BBC, we've got Sky, we've got ITN News all using it for media, uh, so for media sort of representation, but equally event organisers, you know, sort of establishments like here looking for speakers for events they will go in search of it so please do come out of your comfort zone you've got something really important to say and when we set this up I was looking out to see who we wanted ambassadors to help us spread the word and the first person I spoke to was today's guest the most wonderful kind knowledgeable Marnie Millard, in fact, sorry, Dr. Marnie Millard, OBE. Delighted to have you here today, our Be Heard ambassador, former group chief exec for Nichols, which was the home of Vimto, if Correct. I remember rightly, yep. and now stepping into a new chapter, taking on non exec roles for a host of organisations. She's got nothing else to do, to be honest. So, welcome, Marnie. Thank you for joining us on this great couch here today in your home. Yes, this is uh, my home uh, for, for much of my time as uh, chair of the board for, for UA92. I've been here since 2019 and uh, it's an absolute privilege uh, and pleasure uh, to work with the students and uh, keep uh, charge of the board and uh, uh, Mr Neville, uh, keep him in check. He, he represents the class of 92 uh, as one of our shareholders. So yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful campus. And I can't believe that the time's gone. I've, okay. It's only my second time here. The first time was when we have in the opening. It was an amazing brass band I remember that's uh, right it's absolutely fantastic it was just brilliant so um, without further ado you know we've got half an hour to, to converse today and we want people to take away sort of those bite-sized advice you know because we've just said here just only sort of as we were getting counted in today you know you still get a bit nervous yes don't you? you know yes, and I do it's good nerves though isn't it it, it is I think um, when you're uh, uh, speaking out loud as, as we are and um, you know whether you're being interviewed or you're speaking to a, a group of students or, or business people, um, you, you know, I do still get very nervous because whatever you do with anybody, um, you really want to uh, en ensure that you're giving value um, and you're adding value. And uh, uh, I, I always sort of take the view if one person goes away with just a little nugget um, then that's a good half an hour an hour spent but yes I do still get nervous despite loads of preparation because uh, I am uh, uh, always keen to, to make sure I've got proper preparation time but even so yes yeah, still get nervous every time. And if you've got any questions, then please do drop them in the chat on YouTube or drop them on our social media. Please use the hashtag, hashtag Be Heard as well. So where did the first speaking event, where did you get it uh, and where was it? Yes, so um, actually um, my, my, my sort of media speaking event uh, came following uh, a visit with you uh, and the Northern Power uh, women tribe. Um, we went to Media City, didn't yeah, we? we did. uh, and we were hosted by uh, the BBC uh, and we sat on that infamous red couch. I, I remember it being <laughs> very warm though, don't do you? Yes. You don't see that um, when, when, threadbare, yeah, wasn't when, it? when you're watching uh, Lou and uh, Dan in the morning. I often say to Dan, my husband, you know, that's really threadbare <laughs> that uh, couch, but you don't see it. Um, and I met um, the producer of, of, of Five from Five Live, uh, the 
money program yeah. with Sean Farrington. Um, and uh, he pestered me uh, to be a guest. And I thought, do you know what? I, I, I can't take part in Simone's event, uh, enjoy it, uh, and then uh, not take up the challenge. In between that, though, before uh, going on to Five Live, the breakfast uh, programme, the money programme, I did actually do an interview with, uh, with Sky News. Um, and that was Ian King on the, the lunchtime show when we were uh, doing our, our results during COVID. Mm when I was at Vimto and uh, I, I found that quite nerve wracking. I, I actually found um, the Five Live programme because I was a programme guest. Um, I found that uh, much more comfortable um, and uh, uh, it was very, very well prepared for. Uh, and I think that's really key to any event or, or piece of speaking that you're doing is, you know, what are we trying to achieve here with the audience? And therefore, you know, just try and get those key messages in your mind, um, you know, what you want to land during that time. But that was a very, very, uh, really positive experience. And, and I would happily uh, go back uh, and, and speak with Sean at any time. It, it was a very friendly atmosphere. Not saying that Sky News wasn't, uh, but it was much more punchy. And, and I found that one quite uh, uh, nerve wracking. But I think that's probably it, it, they often talk about that, don't they? When it when it's about the company figures or the company stats, then yes. it's probably la more likely to yep. be sort of a uh, bit more Paxman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. He was very direct, and uh, I, I got told off because um, obviously it was done virtually. The interview, um, and uh, a bit like you, I'm always using my hands, and apparently <laughs> the hands kept shaking my. I kept shaking the uh, uh, the computer so it was making me uh, vibrate at the other end so he did he did tell me off for, for not sitting still so uh, um, yeah but other than that you know I think um, you, you learn something every time um, you, you, you do um, something out of your comfort zone as, mm. as you well know and uh, you reflect back and you think oh, I probably wouldn't do that next time but that bit I was really happy with and I think starting with the radio in some ways it is somewhat mm. easier because it, it's more intimate it is more of a conversation uh, than an interview but I, I, I was when we were preparing for today um, and uh, you know you were asking me um, you know what what things I'd uh, taken part in I did go on Radio 4 question time with um, Mr Dimbleby uh, actually um, the, the new mayor of Yorkshire Tracy Brabham oh, yeah. was on there she was lovely we, we had a very very good conversation um, but that was really hard to prepare for because the questions are coming from the audience um, and I was actually chair of the CBI for the North West region when we did that programme um, and it was just as the referendum had happened so you know Brexit was very very topical and I was quite concerned because I was representing business in the North West and I was there with my CBI hat on however very very conscious that I'm chief executive of a, a public listed company as well um, and you never really want to say anything that uh, you know would reflect poorly uh, uh, mm. on the business and and uh, you know so I found that quite tricky and for some reason he kept coming to me first to answer the questions whereas normally with a panel you've got a little bit of thinking mm. time haven't you um, but on this occasion he must have decided that uh, um, you know I was first uh, on his list every single time but that that, that was very, very nerve-wracking, simply because you weren't quite sure what questions were going to come your way. So it was much harder to pre prepare for. And I think there's two things in there for me. Um, I remember in one of our shared WhatsApp groups, uh, I remember you being very honest and very un authentic and vulnerable almost about that sort of that very first yes. one that you did. And you went, but, and I just remember thinking, that's why Marnie has to be our ambassador for something we've not even created yet. But I'm sure if I asked nicer, it would be fine. And it was because you were so honest and saying, but I feel I have a responsibility and also I want to make sure I keep coming out of that comfort zone. So I am going to do it again. And you did. Yes. You know, and what 
would you say, you know, it's, it's great to be prepared on, but any other sort of top tips that help you with the shaky hands? <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, again, bit being prepared um, and then um, really just trying to relax and, and, and be yourself um, and, you know, always be truthful with, mm. with, with questions and, and answers. And I think uh, with that approach, um, you know, people seem to enjoy, you know, talking to um, us power women um, and you know I do take that responsibility fluently enough we, we're, we're recruiting uh, um, for a non-exec director for one of my other businesses that I chair um, and again my network I've, I've reached out and you know we've, we've got some fabulous ladies that have come forward and you know we're going to have a hard choice um, but uh, you know one lady we just had a very good conversation uh, last week and she's embarking on her non-exec career and I don't know it just comes naturally to me to offer her help mm. and connect I think it's part of you know why we're such good friends is that you know you want to walk the talk and, and therefore you know all the hard hard work uh, you do to put us you know connect with people and you know the visit to the BBC um, you've then got to use it mm. Simone and you know it, it's like our students here um, you want to be a good role mm. model if, 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 if they see you um, sort of jumping and leaping into that unknown um, then um, you know what, what's the worst can happen really um, you know you probably say something a little bit silly but uh, you you remember it, but nobody else does. You you always remember the little bad thing that you think, oh, I could have just done that better. Whereas everybody else goes away and says that that was really um, interesting to listen to. I I, I remember one. Um, situation I, I was uh, asked to do uh, a little lunchtime um, uh, event uh, and I was talking to aspiring lawyers um, and I was thinking goodness me you know that these ladies you know what fast tracking in their careers you know bright as buttons and um, you know we were just chatting over lunch and it was quite intimate and it, it was quite tricky really because I think big events where there's lots of people speaking mm. are, are, are more comforting aren't they and I came away thinking oh I don't know whether I've hit the mark there with these ladies I, I felt quite trivial when I was talking to them about my career and my experience anyway one of these uh, ladies uh, reached out to me on LinkedIn um, and it was a Monday we did the lunch and she said I went to work that beginning of that week um, and there was a opportunity uh, a new role and uh, she didn't think she was capable of you know she wasn't ready mm. for it you know she didn't have everything ticked in terms of the requirements of skills and experience but after my lunch she said I thought Marnie would have gone for this because you know I talked about how we really want to make sure that we're fully mm. qualified to take a new opportunity um, whereas actually you know if you've got 80 percent of what's required you know you can forge forward and she went for it and you know what she got the job and I thought right that that conversation um, that spurred her on because she said to me I thought what would Marnie do and she said <laughs> Marnie would have gone for this so I'm going to go for it I feel like that's a t-shirt isn't it what would Marnie do <laughs> um, and we've got these we had these uh, postcards made you know sort of with it I've been heard because um, we did a campaign earlier this year and we asked people to record like a three minute video because actually it can be this this extreme over here of question time but it can also be being introduced uh, interviewed for a student podcast yes or it could be a very small round table or it could be so it's it's picking those spaces isn't it but yeah. I think one of the things that I was really adamant is on the other side was to put you know I nominate someone put someone forward I think yeah. sometimes I think it's that that sponsorship approach sometimes yeah. isn't it that you call it where you go actually you know I think you've got to be generous sometimes and go I've got this but actually I can't do it yeah I can't do it because either my diary's slammed or, yeah. or whatever but I think sometimes it's being conscious about passing yeah. it on which yeah. you do as well don't I you do. you, you yeah. know yeah uh, and I, I get a lot of um it's a lot of pleasure when you see people um become successful and probably take themselves into some space they've been you know quietly afraid of I've, I've you know I've been part of your mentoring program haven't I and I've been uh, I don't even work with Joanne now she's my friend um, and you know I, I got as much from mentoring Joanne mm. um, and I think you know she, she you know she's really helped me uh, professionally in the DNI space as well um, and you know it, it's reciprocal and she just texted me the, the other week and uh, 
um, you know, said, oh, is it time for a, a coffee and a <laughs> ketchup? But absolutely. So, you know, I think it, it, it starts about giving back. And, and I can see her, she has... It's not just through me. You know, it's the gentle conversations. I'm that sounding board that she can say anything to and, and you know, probably discuss what, what's worrying her. And she, you know, professionally, she has definitely grown e enormously and, you know, a really great person. And as I say, she's, you know, a friend now, not not just somebody I've been mentoring and, and met through your organisation. But I think there's, the, there's that power, isn't there, of, mm. of using that, you know, your voice and your power. Why is it so important that whether it's a TV programme or a news programme or radio or a meeting for that matter, why is it so important to have a different range of voices? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think um, it, it's the same uh, with, with, with any sort of organisation. You know, if I think about, you know, the boards that I chair, um, you know, having different voices means um, you have different minds, you have different beliefs, um, and, you know, that encourages diversity mm. as, as a result. It's not just about gender um, or, or, or culturally where you come from. You know, it's, it's how you think, and, and therefore you can get a really diverse uh, set of individuals that might look quite similar, but actually that thinking and those voices are very different. Um, and I think there's a richness in that, and I think you'd hope then the audience will identify with one of those voices accordingly and and as I say you know go away thinking well you know Marnie didn't go to university but here she is uh, chairing UA92 and you know having a, a large uh, level of responsibility for all these great students and um, you know particularly through the two years that, that we've just had you know student life has not been mm. easy for them but you know every time I come on campus there's big smiles and everybody wants to tell me how they're getting on so even though I didn't go to university I did want to be a teacher when I was growing up um, that that was my ambition my teachers were my role models and, and when I think back and reflect now Simone my, my little world was so small when I was growing up they were my only role mm. models so I think you know as we speak out and share good experiences challenging experiences it just makes everything real isn't it because um, you know we're all just folk underneath everything um, but it's amazing what you can set your mind to what you can learn mm. about what you can read about um, if you choose to do it and, and I think therefore that richness of voice and different voice is so so important 100% and I've got some questions coming through and don't forget if you've got any questions please tag us on social media or drop it into the YouTube chat and don't forget to use the hashtag hashtag be heard so a BWD limited what would you say to a young person wanting to raise their profile on LinkedIn because like I say this is from whether mm. this be the media whether this be sort of speaking in a meeting yeah. it's all about starting somewhere isn't there so how do we how do we make that start for that young person yeah, I mean, one of your students, one of our wonderful students here today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think LinkedIn is, um, you know, a, a, every platform has a purpose. And I, and I think you need to have a uh, have a look at LinkedIn and, and decide, you know, what your personality and what your profile is going to be and how you're going to use uh, uh, LinkedIn. I think the wonderful thing is, you know, there's some really good examples, isn't there, of, of how to have a good LinkedIn uh, profile. Um, and I think it's almost deciding probably what you're going to be famous for on that and what you're going mm. to talk about. And remember, it is a professional social media platform. So, you know, everybody who's going to read it will read with interest, but it is your professional self that you're promoting. And, and I think that just needs to be top of mind, um, you know, when a young student or a young person is, um, um, you know, using that pl platform to communicate. It's that balance of having your Ibiza holiday snaps, isn't it? Or, yes. But it, there's a balance, isn't it, about, as well as about being yourself. Yes. It's so, but it's that it's yeah. that line, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. I, I, I think um, anybody, uh, 
follow somebody like Dominic McGregor, you know, ex-social yeah. chain. Um, he's actually uh, a friend of UA92, and I've known Dom for uh, a long while. But, you know, following somebody like that, and therefore, you know, don't be afraid to nick ideas because, um, you know, that that's how you learn and how you craft and develop your profile, isn't it? So. It's, it's flattering. I'm always a big fan of asking. Yes. You know, every, I think the community that we've built, so we have Be Heard, we have Northern Power Women, Northern Power Future, as a power platform you know you know just busy sometimes yeah. you know but I think I'm really proud of the community that has been built well everybody wants to do something yes everybody wants to help yeah. so I always think ask ask because actually there's a whole community of people out there yeah. that that do want to you know people are very generous with their yeah. time and opinions I mean for example I, I, I was uh, um, updating my CV as I left Vimto um, and of course, a, a CV for a non-exec portfolio career is quite different to your executive uh, experience. So I had a bit of a stab at it, but then I've got some really trusted uh, headhunter uh, colleagues, actually. And I just said, you know, will, will you have a good frank review of this and, 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 and you know, give me some direction? And, and that feedback was really helpful. So I don't think you're ever too experienced or too mature to not take on feedback and ask for the help because yeah. nine times out of ten every time you know we know it don't we yeah. when we ask for support within our community um you know that there's never a lack of support and help that comes forward is it 100 percent. we've got someone who saw me speak at one of the, the live test events recently and he's gary uh you know and he just said i want to help you find your voice yes. you know we had a conversation many years ago I love what you do but what is it yes. you know kind of thing you know so i think it's really important you know to have your true story or your two self you know yes. to be heard you know uh, so i think that's so how have you've talked about the uh, the person that in, you encouraged after speaking to go and apply for a role but yes. how have your wider media and speaking experiences impacted on your life um it's made me very reflective because um you think about your life in a slightly different context when you're talking about your career um, and you think more broadly about those different milestones. And I think for me, just coming back to the point that, you know, I did want to be a teacher. Um, and, um, you know, when I think about our, our prospective students, um, I had a, an opportunity, I had an interview at, at Birmingham, it was a polytechnic then, and, you know, my, my parents hadn't been to university, so they, they always encouraged mm. me and my sister, but, uh, you know, that, that, that sort of had never come into their thinking. So, you know, I got on the train at Peterborough, I got to uh, New Street Station, uh, got my A to Z out because I had to walk to campus, you know, you no, no Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> in those days um, and I walked into that campus and I looked around I thought I don't belong here I was completely intimidated um, and I just walked out so I never went to the interview I got back on the train got back to Peterborough and I went into the world of, of work now I have not stopped learning and um, you know and, and being involved here is, is completely different but you know I want our students you know those students that um, have got potential uh, it's perhaps unrealized at the moment it's untapped you know UA92 is is a very very different proposition mm. um, you know to um, other um, institutions in, in Greater Manchester and, and we're proud of that we're here for a different reason um, but you know taking yourself out of that comfort zone but it's those ref and it's so when I'm talking about why am I here at UA92 I sort of start thinking consciously then and, and then the story sort of oh yeah that milestone happened this happened you know when, when I ran a factory for five years that was such a difficult gig for me but I learned so mm. much and I was out of my comfort zone every single day in, in, in that job job so it does make you really reflect about your life um, and now I'm on a new chapter and you know I will say to my children I say the same to our students having choices in life is a magnificent mm. and a, a really special place to be and I'm really lucky right here right now I've got a choice to sit on this couch with you and um, you know do different things every day of every week now and um, you know I'm very very lucky and changing lives here right changing well I hope lives. so yeah the, kid, the, the kids they're not all kids the students <laughs> are doing that themselves younger than us Marnie <laughs> they are I, I mean I, I can't tell you how inspiring it is to come on campus on a Monday morning at nine o'clock um, and the morning students are 
they're here and they are raring to go, uh, you know, the, when we are on campus, obviously, in more normal times. But their dedication and, and you know, the, the, the interviews they've done on me and how they set the open, you know, just a fabulous uh, bunch of, uh, of of young people. Well, we're excited because we're gonna, I'm going to do an interview after this and then there's going to be um, a, an article that comes out of it from one of the journalism students. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, so really exciting, you know, and the more that we, we've got like gift, haven't we, to, yeah. to sort of help profile. So we've got a couple of questions coming in. So this sort of relates, Joanne Feaster, how do you get exposure to media when just starting out of no previous contacts in that area? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think joining something like the Northern Power Movement, because, you know, that community of, of women is just phenomenal. Um, and, you know, we, we come together normally, don't we, for the awards ceremony. And, I mean, how many people do you get at that now? Thousands, what, th yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that community, um, you know, opens a lot of doors, mm. doesn't it? Um, I remember having a trip to the House of uh, Lords uh, with uh, Baroness Ruth Hennig. Um, she's in her mid-70s, a very, very active um, peer. Um, and she just said something to me. I said, you know, what, what would your advice, uh, Ruth, be, uh, you know, to, to young people or to me, for example, because you're younger than her, should say yes more than yeah. you say no yeah. and then go with it. Yeah. Um, and I thought, yeah, I, I've done that a lot. Sometimes I get myself in a bit of a pickle because I think I've taken too much on and you've said you'll speak at this conference. Um, but, you know, people want to hear people's stories. And um, I think, therefore, being, you know, get yourself out on the business circuit when we're able to, again, networking. You know, a lot of people will think, oh, do I really need to go to that evening do networking should be a really important part of your day job uh, because it is that connectivity that opens those doors and gives you those opportunities i'm a big fan of saying yes and working out later yeah uh, michelle jones uh, is stepping outside your comfort zone crucial to growth is it the best way to learn i think so yeah. definitely well i mean 100 percent. i'm going to go quick fire through some of these yep. because you know we're, we're, we can't believe we're running out where did the 30 minutes go um northern power futures do either of you hear the voice that tells you you can't do it or if you're not good enough how do you silence that voice yeah um it, that's that's a really good question and I, I, again I was talking to uh, um, you know the, the lady I was referring to about the role about that imposter syndrome and uh, I, I, I don't think it ever goes away really does it um, Simone but but you learn to deal with it and, and I'm just really fortunate I've got a very supportive family but a very very supportive cohort of uh, colleagues and, and, and friends now through you know work that Actually, they champion mm. you and we champion each other back. So I think that's just really, really important. I think that's really important is that kind of, you know, I think sometimes you've got to tell someone else's story back to them. So yes. I think that's something else for Joanne as well um, is is put yourself forward on be-her.io. Really sort of think about what your story is. You know, think about what it is that you want to go out there and talk about it. And then whether or not it starts off at sort of business events or student yep. events, find students that are in that, you know, sort of that um, specialism or whatever. And, you know, get yourself started on yeah. interviews or whatever. It's, You've it's got to build things. your confidence, haven't you? Apps. You know, it, confidence, um, you know, is, 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 is a really positive motivator. And, and, and the more um, out of your comfort zone times you have, the more your confidence will, will build and you you know you, you you grow with that don't you absolutely and I think sometimes it's it's just that one little thing and all of a sudden you think if I've just made that one step every day yes. six months down the line you're in a totally different place and think I can't believe I've did that you yeah. know so so with what is your one takeaway uh, that people can do today to build that confidence and to build that profile what is that one yeah, takeaway? I, I, I think it is what you've just said is is sitting down and deciding you know what your story is and your story is real your experience Experience is real and nobody is better placed than you to talk about yourself, um, you know, what, what you do professionally, you know, what, what you do socially. So, so own yourself. Yeah, and if you think about whether it be the BBC sofa or whatever, it's not always going to be about talking about your company figures. It's no. going to talk about, you know, sort of how you have just created the most amazing viral conversation because you've done a skateboard trick. It yeah. could be anything. Find, it's almost in your comfort zone and out your comfort yeah. zone at the same time, isn't it? You know, but it needs you to do it. It yes. needs you to do it. So 
I can't believe where the time has gone. Me neither. Uh, thank you all for joining us for today's Bite Size Be Heard Lunch with Dr. Marnie Millard, OBE. Such an amazing role model. She's clearly going to go off to be a teacher now. That's where we're <laughs> going to see her. We're going to see her at you know, the next big teacher education conference. Thank you so much to the massive team here at UA92. Thank you to the wonderful students. A massive round of applause. Really delighted that you're part of today's conversation. Keep the conversation going on social media. Use the hashtag Be Heard. If there's any conversations that you've got that you haven't had a chance to sort of uh, get through to us, just send us a message. We'll pass it on to Marnie and we'll feed it back out again. But thank you for joining us. Then this wonderful, is it Monday? Monday yeah. lunchtime. And thank you to all of you out there. And thank you so much to Dr. Marnie today for joining us. My pleasure.